Hello, in this part we will focus on mutexes. This exercise uh, will demonstrate basic features of mutex. In this part we will create a simple example with two tasks and one single mutex. So I'm starting with STM32CubeID. You can use as well STM32CubeMX and your preferred toolchain. So I start new STM32 project. My microcontroller is STM32L476RG, but you can use any other STM32 device. So L476RG, this is my part. I will name my project 9 underscore mutex underscore basic. And I will wait uh, for pinout of my microcontroller. As I told you, uh, in the project we will have two tasks, task 1 and task 2, on equal priority, and the one single mutex, and the both tasks will perform some actions holding the mutex, just to be sure that only one task is performing some action at, uh, let's say, one moment. It can be used, for example, to have uh, unique access uh, to some communication peripheral. Okay, from hardware components uh, we would need only the debug interface, so I go to system, core, sys, and within debug I'm selecting trace asynchronous SW to have SWD and uh, to have single wire output, which is used uh, for single wire trace. It is quite convenient way to communicate uh, between, let's say, the, the tasks or interrupts and uh, the console within CubeID environment. Okay, the next point uh, we would need to change is a time-based source, which is used uh, for HAL libraries. So this is the timer, which is used for timeouts and delays within HAL functions. By default it is Systeek, but as Systeek will be used by operating system, we will select other timer. Timer 6 is a good candidate because it doesn't have any input nor output channels, so it's a good choice. Then we need to enable the free RTOS, so I go to middleware, free RTOS, and uh, the interface I'm selecting CMC's version 2. So let's continue with this. The first point I would like to check is uh, whether mutexes are already enabled within the config parameters. Let me remind you that these config parameters and include parameters are stored within stm32config.h file, which is generated automatically upon the creation of the project once we are using stm 32 cubeid or cubemix. Okay, my mutexes are enabled, uh, so use mutexes are enabled and uh, we can create tasks. We would rename the default task into task1. So I double click on it, I change its name to task1, priority normal, it will be the same, and uh, let's say the stack size 256 words, and uh, entry function start task1. I will create uh, another task, so I'm coming back to um, tasks and queues, click add, and uh, task 2, priority, it will be normal, 256 uh, words as a stack size and start task 2 as an entry function. That's it. So those are, let's say, our two tasks we would like to use within this exercise. Then we will enable one mutex. So I go to mutexes tab and within this mutexes section I'm clicking add. I would keep the default name, so my mutex01. I press OK. Those are, let's say, the all operations within freer toys configuration and in the configurator in general. So I generate the project. OK, my project is generated. I can open main.c file. If it's not done automatically, I can find it within core, source, and main.c. And the next point would be the code manipulation, code uh, let's say modification. So our project. Uh, and uh, I will focus on main.c file. Within main.c file, if I go below, I can see, as usual, the creation of operating system components. So in our case, those will be, let's say, two tasks, task one and task two. And we can see as well the definitions and the handler declaration of our mutex. 
Then going below within main function, I can see the hardware initialization, then the initialization of the kernel. So in fact, allocation of its heap memory area. And just after, I can see the creation of the mutex. There is a typical function OS mutex new, and the only argument is an address of, for the structure with the attributes. The visible attributes uh, for us is the, is the name, which we specified with a configuration part. And the rest of it contains the pointer to the structure of uh, the mutex where it holds its uh, configuration and parameters. If we go below, we can see the creation of both tasks and uh, starting the scheduler. So the next point on our side uh, would be coding of both tasks. So let's start from task one. We'll start with some longer delay. So sending the, our task to the block state for two seconds. Then we would like to acquire the demotex because as I already mentioned at the beginning, in our application, we would like uh, to hold to, to share the mutex between those two tasks, task one and task two. And during holding the mutex, the particular task will perform some unique operation, which should not be uh, done by the other task. Please remember that during the task code execution, we do not have the full control what part of the code would be executed within, let's say, the time given to the task. So what may happen that um, so we will be preempted by other tasks, by the scheduler to uh, within operation on some interface, shared interface, uh, which should not be shared between the tasks. So sometimes it is important to really block the resource using mutex in this case, to be sure that the operations on this interface will be finalized by the given task before it will be given to the other task. This is the purpose of our exercise. So. Uh, after our task will return to the run state uh, from blocked state, it will try to collect the mutex. So as mutex acquire. So as you can see, the name in convention is very similar to use and semaphores. Uh, so mutex acquire, and then we need mutex handler and the timeout. So we will try to do it within one second. Then. We will do sign of life and this in fact is simulating our unique access to the shared resources in this case this uh, shared resource is uh, let's say the uh, intro instrumentation trace macros also itm interface so which is uh, displaying messages uh, on the console uh, so this is single wire trace in fact uh, so this is the shared resource and after we perform this write operation within this uh, on this interface, we can release the mutex. So as mutex release, and again we need the handler, and that's it. Okay, so this is task one. Those are let's say task one operations. Now let's go to task two, and the only difference would be that there would be different sign of life. Okay, we need to specify this task action. So let me edit here. In my examples, I'm using ITM interface to send, uh, let's say, simple characters, as you see. So this function would be like this, can be like this. You can use as well, for example, UART interface for this or some LED blinking if you have more LEDs. On Nucleo, I got only one, so it would be quite difficult to use any other sign of life using one LED only. Okay, so this function could look like send a char and it would be a message. And I would send as well the sign of new line. Okay, and we need a declaration on top. This section is quite nice because it's private function prototypes. Okay, so we are done with the coding. We can check whether the application will work like we expected. So I would build the code. In the meantime, I'm connecting the board as well. And I can start a debug session. Okay, I click on the back icon to start a debug session. I'm within the debugger tab. I'm enabling the single wire viewer and I'm changing the core clock to four megahertz, which is our case. And then I start a debug session. 
Okay, we will need the single wire viewer ITM data console. I've got it already here. In case you do not have it, please go to quick access, enter SWV, and please select this line with this monitor icon over here. Once done it, you need to configure it using this icon. Select uh, enable port, uh, let's say zero, and start tracing by pressing this icon. Once done, I can just start code execution. And we can see execution of our code one by one. So we can see that uh, tasks are executed one by one. And in fact, the access to the ITM interface is quite unique. It's unique uh, due to the mutex. So that's all for this exercise. Uh, in next one, we will change a bit the code and um, we will compare the behavior of the application by replacing mutex with the semaphore. So thank you for watching this video.